before we get to graphical user interface programming, there's some stuff that I'd like to cover that will make things easier. The first thing I want to cover is some things related to pa parameter passing that will show up in graphical user interface programming. And I didn't feel it was really necessary when we were doing the basic stuff, but I want to come back to that. Um, another thing I want to talk about is use of programming with classes. Um, so let's start with parameter, pass parameter lists. So we'll talk about um, simple um, parameter passing, as, as, as you saw before with Python. Then we'll talk about how you can do p parameter passing, where you have um, numbers of, par of parameters or keyword-defined parameters where things are done at runtime, effectively, and how all this is combined. Um, and um, we'll go from there. So as a reminder, when we looked at parameter passing, we had something like this. We have three parameters here for this function, p1, p, p2, and p3. And this, f this function does something very simple. It takes the first one, adds it to 10 times the second one, and 100 times the third one. And if we call it 1, 2, 3, then it gives it to us in the reverse order, 3, 2, 1. Okay. We can also pass not values, but variables. Um, and here I've defined actually a, b, and c to point to the same value 2, and I call it with variables. So that's all stuff you've seen before, and if you've programmed in any language, you've seen something like this. Okay, and if I call this, by the way, with only two arguments, I have a problem. It's going to give me an error because this needs three parameters to run. Okay, now built into the basic language of Python is also this idea that each of these parameters here has a keyword associated with it, p1, p2, and p3, and I can pass any or all of those parameters by specifying the keyword, and when I do that, I can put, do it in any order. And I can even mix it. The first parameter is going to be p1, and I can specify the other ones by keyword. So again, that's just something that's 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 in Python, you can do it either way. You can mix them. You can also mix and match. The only thing you can't do is if I stick here um, a value for P1, Python's going to say this is ambiguous. You've specified P1 positionally. Now you give me a keyword. Which one do I use? So it's going to throw an error. Um, okay. Now we can also make parameters optional. So if I rewrite my, my function so that I say p2 equals 2 and p3 equals 0, now I've defined a function where I can call it with 1, 2, or 3 parameters. If I give it only one parameter, that specifies p1, and p2 and p3 get these default values, but I can specify it with up to three parameters. So if I give it three parameters, um, as I did before, it works exactly as before, but if I call it with now with one parameter, it's going to default P2 is 2 and P3 is 0. And I can use both keyword spe functionality or, non or, or positional. So I could also call this by saying function um, P1 equals, and that will work just fine too. Okay, but... Um, I have to specify any parameters without defaults because this thing simply does not know what to supply for P1 if I call it like I did here with no arguments. All right. Make sense? You've seen all this before, but it's been a while. Okay. All right. Now, um, you may have noticed that some of the things that are built into Python will take an adjustable number of parameters. One example is zip. Zip, if you don't remember, takes lists of things or tuples of things and rearranges them so that we, have an, we get out of zip new tuples with a, 1, and 4, or, and then b, 2, and 5, and so on, or in this case, 1 and 4. And you can see here I've passed it three arguments. Here I've passed it with two arguments. 
That might be something you want to do in your code too. Work with an adjustable number of parameters. Um, you might even also want to work with arbitrary keywords. Um, why would you want to work with arbitrary passing of keywords? Well, if you're taking some input from one place and you're passing it on to something else, you don't want to have to rewrite your code every time the thing that you're passing stuff to adds a new keyword. And, and you'll see this done explicitly. Um, okay, so that's the motivation for this. What, how does it actually work? Well, talking about positional parameters, first of all, if instead of sticking in your definition a bunch of different positional parameters, we stick in star followed by some variable name, when we call this, rather than all of the parameters being assigned one to each variable, it takes all of the positional parameters and it sticks them into parms as a tuple. So um, what's going on here is I've just written a little bit of code, prints out whatever we got past, and then it um, does something similar to what we did before. So here, when we call it with just one parameter, we get back a tuple that contains one value. When we call it with two um, arguments, we get a tuple with two arguments. We do it with five, we get five arguments. So I've written the same code that I did before, but now it'll work the same way that the other code did, but it doesn't need to know specifically that we know we're not going to work with more than three parameters. Okay. What's that? No, no. If you call this with no, um, if you call this with no arguments, you get the then parms will be defined as a tuple with no elements in it. And this will this code will even work because when it tries to iterate over the length i in length range zero has no elements, so it won't do anything in this loop. And sum has been defined as zero, so it'll return zero. What if you want to receive um, keyword parameters? Okay, well now you use two asterisks and a variable that will get a dictionary. So here I'm defining a series of parameters by keyword name and they go into a dictionary. So um, the order here of that it prints out is random, um, and I cannot pass positional parameters in this for, to this function here as I've defined it. Why? Because they have no keywords associated with them. So um, this code will accept any keywords and no positional parameters. Well, you might want to do both. There's no problem with doing both. You can stick both in. Um, so here we go, and I've defined this with all of the above. Okay, here is a positional parameter. Here is a um, defaulted parameter. Anything, if, be, if I have more than two positional parameters, they'll show up in, in args. And if I have any, uns any keyword parameters that are not P1 or P2, they will show up in here. So here I've defined that I just print everything out that I get. So if I call it with one argument, it shows up as P1. If I call it with four positional arguments and a keyword that's not defined anywhere else, you'll see that um, the one shows up as P1, the two goes to P2, the remainder show up in args, and that um, keyword, other keyword shows up in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the keyword array. So everything's happy. Okay. If I call this with no arguments, what happens? Well, I haven't specified P1. I get an error. Okay. Um, I can actually specify something like um, 2, 3, 4, P1 equals, and it'll be fine with that too. Okay. Um, so, uh, so you can do all of the above.
Okay. You can also go the other way around. Let's say I have, I want to pass parameters and I want to define the parameters I'm passing at runtime. Okay. So here I've made a tuple. The tuple contains five elements and I can say stick those five elements as the first five positional parameters by passing it with a star in front of it. Okay, so this code is a completely equivalent in this case to this code. Okay, um, and just as before, positional parameters have to come before keyword parameters. And if you're going to mix these things, if you're going to mix um, putting specif specified numerical parameters and this indexing function method, you have to put the true positional parameters first. So in other words, this order. So that's a way to get a bunch of parameters in, particularly when you don't know what you're going to have at the time you're writing your code. Um, and we can do the same thing with keywords parameters by defining a dictionary and using the same syntax we used on the sending end now on the on the receiving end now as on the sending end. So here I've defined three keyword parameters and when I call when I pass the dictionary in this fashion so I've defined P1, I've defined P2 and um, P3 is not in the function definition so there it shows up in the in the keywords. Okay so it's a, it's a, not always easy to wrap your head around this stuff, but it sort of makes sense once you get used to it. Um, and we can um, combine that stuff too. So here I'm doing all of the above. I've specified a parameter by position. I've specified it by keywords. I've specified a list. And I've specified a dictionary. And all those things get straightened out. Excuse me. And so we get the, um, and, and it just does what it, you'd think it would. You can specify the list and the keyword in either order when you're doing this. Okay? But you have to be careful that you don't double define something. Um, actually, I forgot to define, um, show you what I was defining here, but in the dictionary, this dictionary D at the moment defines P1. So here I've defined P1 um, positionally and I've defined it in the dictionary and I get a conflict and Python says, wait a minute, you can't double define what you're passing. Okay, so you can use these two syntaxes together. So here I've defined a routine and whatever positional parameters and whatever keyword parameters are going to come into this routine are just going to get passed through from the wrapper to the wrappy. Um, so uh, you'll see that kind of notation show up quite frequently um, in places where you're taking stuff and you're just passing it on to something else that's going to actually chew on those parameters. And you could go through and look at the documentation and define every keyword and positional parameter exactly as what you're passing it to. But if those, but if that ever changes, your code is going to break or at least going to going to provide a limitation. So when you do things in this generic fashion, you um, avoid that. Okay. So um, in summary. Python gives us a bunch of ways to handle passing of parameters, and it gives us a bunch of ways to accept parameters. And um, uh, typically, you use both together, the way I did here. But you don't have to. OK. Um, this was pretty quick, but it wasn't meant to be rocket science. Any questions on passing of parameters, the way we've described here? Okay, none of you are brave, but all right. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No. Um, the question was, if you want to pass something into a Python program from the command line, typically, how do you do that? What's that? Does it work anything like this? And the answer is no. Um, there are arguments. This is a different topic. And um, you get, uh, there are different ways of handling it. There's a nice little package for parsing this stuff, or you can just go to the raw arguments vector that Python defines, in, and I think it's in .sys, but I'm not remembering off the top of my head. So it does not work anything like this.